This content video is exploring the face-to-path relationship in the golf swing. So I've got a, a little target here that we use for wedge practice, uh, but we're gonna use it like a plane board. Um, so you can see if I were to set my four iron on the ground, it's not quite uh, flush to it, but it's gonna give us a decent representation of a swing plane. Now, what we're gonna look at is the club face orientation compared to this plane at different points during the swing. There's a philosophy out there that you wanna to try to keep the club face square to this plane of movement as long as possible. Um, and what I'm gonna show you is that that's A, challenging to do, and B, I don't think it's the uh, most athletic way or most uh, natural way for the club to swing. And we'll look at a bunch of examples of tour pros to kind of see what they've figured out as far as the amount of rotation. So what we're gonna do is let's pretend that instead of making a swing way up here where the club's following kind of a somewhat planar or circular path, we're gonna shrink it down so that I'm standing right here in this H and the, the club is gonna work around me um, as, I, as I make my swing. So in order for the club face to be square to the path, most people would define that as perpendicular. So the leading edge, perpendicular, kind of like that. Now what we'll see is, let's say it's perpendicular when the shaft is vertical. If I lean the shaft forward, I can still keep the leading edge uh, perpendicular, but that would actually take a little bit of rotation in order to do so. Um, so if I kept the, the face square to the path of the grip, it would be open, and then if I rotated it, that makes it square. So down at the bottom, when I'm making contact, we're gonna have a little bit of shaft lean, and then the club face will be rotated just a touch compared to the plane of the club um, in order to square the face. Now, the theory of keeping the club face square to the path, you'll see really doesn't show up when we look at it in the backswing. Because there's a couple key points where it's easy to see the face to path relationship. One is when the shaft is parallel on either side of the ball and then two is looking at the top of the swing. So if, if we're looking at when the shaft is parallel, if it was to be square, that means that during the takeaway and during the downswing, you would want the face to be roughly at that angle there. Or if I had my six iron, that's roughly a 60 degree um, vertical swing plane with the six iron, that means that the club face would be square or perpendicular to that 60 degree angle. It would look very much like that. And most people would say that that's pretty closed. So if we fast forward to the downswing, that means that if we're saying this is pretty close to square or even vertical is square, I don't, I don't care too much. That means that I've still got to rotate it a good 40 degrees or so from here down to the bottom of the swing in order to get the club face pointed at the target or get it square to the path. So if I've got some rotation happening between here and contact, it doesn't make sense if you look at a lot of other sports that I would want to then change the path or change the, the movement of my arms right there at impact. It would make a lot more sense that I would want to gradually close it and continue it closing so that when it's in this follow through position, square to the path would actually point close to like that. That would look like a very open club face by most standards. Square would be something like that, but now you can see that that's more closed than it was at the at impact. So I tend to look for more of a gradual rotation and gradual closing compared to the path. The place where it's the most apparent is if you look at the top of the swing. If I was to try to keep this square to the path at the top of the swing, you can see that that would look extremely closed by most standards. Um, most golfers are gonna be closer to parallel to the plane, not perpendicular to it. So the club face has to rotate a good 70, 80, 90 degrees between the top of the swing and impact. So you could either, we'll do it there. So here's the top of the swing, there's impact. You could either wait, 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 and then try to snap it closed. Um, or you could gradually close it the whole time, or you could close it early and then try to hold it on. I tend to prefer more of the gradual closing the entire downswing um, and even into the follow, because I think it has the most fluidity and kind of, I, I like what it does to the path of the club in terms of helping to build the flat spot. Now you can see that from a practical uh, standpoint, trying to create a swing where I keep that closed 
becomes really challenging as I start to get up towards the top of the swing. You can see that if I get my wrists in any sort of natural position, it's going to be closer to parallel to the plane instead of perpendicular to it. So if the, if the downswing starts with it not square to the plane, there's no way I could keep the club face square to the plane during the entire swing. So now the two major ways that the club face is going to rotate. Um, one would be if I start to pull the grip back like this and kept the club face square, you can, or club face in the same orientation, you can see that it would be pointing way to the right. But because of how this arm tends to rotate when it straightens, what ends up happening is when I pull this in, that shoulder will tend to rotate this closed. So that many golfers who have a look of it, open, 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 and then snapping closed, do so by more bringing the grip back instead of twisting the face. The only way that I can keep the grip moving towards the target or in the, um, it's moving a little bit up, but moving through there, the only way that I could then square it through that would be having pure shaft rotation. Maybe that'll make a little bit more sense from the face on view. From the face on view, you'll frequently see the club face looking like this when it's wide open. Golfers who tend to have more of that earlier rotation will tend to have the, the club face looking more like this. If it's open through this phase here, then what'll typically happen is the grip will end up moving backward like this, and the club will rotate because of how the right arm works on it, like that. As opposed to getting it closed a little bit earlier, and then I can continue the grip moving forward, which helps delay the low point and create some of that flat spot. I thought it would be helpful to take a quick look at a couple different examples in the video analyzer. Uh, so we've got a couple different golfers who are thought to have um, kind of quiet wrists, uh, not a whole lot of club face rotation. Uh, so we got Dustin Johnson and Steve Stricker. Now, it's a little tricky to see the club face uh, because this camera angle is a little bit low, uh, but if we go just until he starts down, you can start to see the club face there is pointing pretty much that way. Now, if it was perpendicular to the swing plane, which would be you know, somewhere in that general category, we would expect to see it pointing kind of more parallel to that line, or the club face would be along that line, pointing out that way. Uh, so even Dustin, uh, with his closed grip or strong grip, bowed wrist, doesn't get the club face uh, square to the swing plane at the top of the swing. And then as he comes down, you can see at this point, the club face is pretty vertical. Uh, so if you were to you know, imagine some type of swing plane, again, it's still got a good 20, 30 degrees to rotate. The only swing plane that that would be uh, square to would be one that was perpendicular or something about like that. Now you will see that he he gets it fairly closed here as, as uh, or close to square to that path as anybody that I've seen. Um, but you will see that on the way through through here, he gets it close to vertical, which again, that would be turned down compared to the swing plane. Now it's, I th um, we'll look at another view. Uh, we'll look at one of my swings from overhead and um, just to show some of the challenges of being able to see the amount of rotation in through here because the collision with the golf ball can definitely disrupt the way that the club face will look. Uh, but quickly, we can look at Steve Stricker over here on the right. You can see at the top, it's par is, uh, club face would be considered square or even slightly open maybe, um, but it's pretty close to parallel to the forearm. And we know if it was pretty, if it was in that same orientation down at the bottom, it would be pointing along the swing plane, not perpendicular to it. So the club face would actually be pointing basically out like that, or probably 60 degrees, 70 degrees out to the right. But then as we get to those two checkpoints that are easy-ish to see the face to path relationship here, you can see again, the only swing plane that would be perpendicular to would be pretty horizontal. So it's still got a good 20, 30 degrees to rotate there. And then you'll see at the point in the follow through when it's toe up, um, he's rotated it past perpendicular. So we know that it's rotating through that phase and we know that it's rotating through that phase. To me, it wouldn't make a whole lot of sense to rotate it, hold on and then rotate it again. 
it seems uh, more um, repeatable or athletic to have slow, smooth, consistent rotation during the entire release pattern. I thought it'd be fun to look at two different perspectives of my own swing from a couple of years ago. Here we've got a uh, camera I've got down the line, and then here you can see that same alignment stick, uh, but now we're looking from uh, close to overhead. Now we're going to use those two references over here. You can see the club face close to vertical, and then on the way through close to vertical as well. So there's definitely there's definitely some rotation through that phase, right? Because the club face, if it stayed uh, at the same orientation to the swing plane, would be pointed out to the right. So we know it's closing, and then to get back to to get to vertical, it would have to close even past where it was at impact. Now from overhead, uh, you'll see that I struck this ball a little bit on the toe. And so what you'll see is that a slightly off center strike can disrupt some of the speed of how it looks like it's closing, which is part of the reason why I think it can be more helpful to look at the window just, uh, prior, just prior to impact and then a couple feet after where some of that noise has been uh, somewhat zeroed out. But you can see that there's definitely some rotation of the club through this phase, even on a release that looks pretty close to square.